uh, this is not an eat your broccoli exercise. This is really exciting stuff, and we have a tremendous opportunity to make a difference in hundreds of thousands and millions of children's lives. As a nation, we are on the cusp of making a big, radical transformation in our country. I really do feel that we're not at the tipping point yet, but I think we're not too far from it if, and only if, people like you hold people like me accountable to do this work. It's all about accountability, and it's about creating systems that promote accountability and promote teachers being the best they can be. And I think the new normal is a new culture in education. We have this culture in education that says we're going to create a new set of circumstances in 2011, and then we're going to leave that alone for 50 years. Because that's what we've done. And the new culture, the new normal should be that whatever we do in 2011, that should become the status quo that we challenge in 2012. And that is a tremendously different culture than education has ever had in the past. Uh, we will be moving to letter grades. We are moving to letter grades. We have moved to letter grades, and the fact that it is now in the rulemaking process, um, we will have what I believe to be a very thought-provoking, but I any person, now I think about this, any person, the least informed person in any school board meeting, um, can will be able to take school data and within 30 seconds to a minute calculate their school's grade. So this has to be transparent. It has to be clear and concise. And guess what? It has to be understandable by the parents because there are a lot of parents out there that do not understand how to exercise choice in this complicated technical arena. I think it's, it's deplorable that we lie to children. I think it's deplorable that we say that a third grader can go to fourth grade and we know that our system never catches those children up. So we have to have a lot of courage here and we have to quit lying to children. We have to start holding folks accountable to make sure children are literate when they leave third grade. Now you have to have a, a strategy that deals with retention. And you can't have a bad retention strategy. So coupled with no social promotion must be a very sophisticated re retention approach which doesn't uh, uh, put kids in a, in a no growth zone, in a, in a no graduation zone. The research does really show that the way teachers are compensated isn't strategic, that years of experience and sort of credentials or master's degree are often uh, unlikely to influence their effect on student achievement. And pensions are structured for teachers. We're doing a little bit of research at this at Joyce, including in, in Indiana with a couple top researchers. But the oftentimes disincentives that teachers uh, feel as they're in their 50s, either to get out a little bit early, to hit a pension maximization point, or to hold on for several years. There are also portability issues with these teacher pensions that tend to inhibit their ability to increase teacher quality. Some people would argue there's a disincentive for younger teachers to enter teaching because the backloaded pension benefits that they would recoup aren't something front and center in their minds as they think about beginning teacher salaries. What we really need to be looking at is not how many degrees you got as, as a lawyer or as an accountant. We're not so concerned about how many degrees you got, but whether you can effectively educate kids or whether you can effectively deliver legal services or medical services or accounting services. What are the three transformational things that have to happen in Colorado that are going to need to be led by the state commissioner? What are those three things? And if you're, you're true to the work that you've been doing in Colorado, those are going to be some pretty audacious things. And I would be looking to find if this person has been audacious and is committed to being audacious around these things. It is not time to slow down. It's time to pick up the pace because the human capital reform issue is just one 
of the reform issues that have to be done in tandem with other issues. And unless you get a number of these reform issues moving, you'll ultimately get backsliding. You can't solve this mess by simply passing a teacher quality bill, an accountability bill, or a flexibility bill that addresses collective bargaining. You have to do them all. As Paul says, busting up the system. And you can't bust up the system by taking a step, taking a breath for a couple years, taking another step, and taking a breath for a couple years.